Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our anatomy playlist. In previous videos, we talked about skin, fascia, bursa, tendons, cartilage, and we started talking about bones in the last video. Today, we'll dig deeper into the classifications or the types of bones. Oh, by the way, did you know that the bone is the hardest connective tissue in the human body? Thanks to matrix made of type 1 collagen, which is the strongest one, as well as minerals like calcium and phosphate, collectively known as hydroxyapatite crystals. Let's review what we have said in the last video. We'll go very quickly. If you want to review it step by step, please watch the last video. Humans have endoskeleton. Some of your bones are axial, others are appendicular. Bones could be compact or cortical or cancellous, spongy or trabecular. According to development, you can make bones by intramembranous ossification or intracartilaginous ossification. According to their shapes, we have long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, pneumatic bones, and sesamoid bones or sesamoid structures. Axial skeleton is in the midline. Appendicular is to the right or to the left. Pause and review. The building unit of the human body is the cell. A group of cells will make tissue. How many types of tissue do we have? We have four. Bones are here, connective tissue. Bones, cartilages, muscles, tendons, all of these are examples of connective tissue. Embryologically speaking, bones came from the mesenchyme, which came from the mesoderm. Functions of bones are numerous. They protect, they provide support, they provide calcium and phosphate balance, as well as making new blood cells thanks to the bone marrow stem cells. When you're growing up, you need cartilage to die, and you will build bone on top of that cartilage. We call this endochondral ossification. And that's why if the fracture affects this growth cartilage plate or epiphyseal cartilage plate in children, this could be a disaster. It can lead to limb discrepancy. How many types of bones do we have? Well, it depends. Structurally speaking, we have two types. Compact bone, such as the one in the shaft, as well as cancellous or trabecular or spongy bone in the proximal end and distal end. Here is a nice comparison between compact bone and trabecular bone. Both the compact and cancellous bone are collectively known as lamellar bone, which is normal in adults. What is not normal in adults is the woven bone, because woven bone are either immature or pathological. How many types of joints do we have? Three. How many types of cartilage do we have? Three. So we're done with this and we're done with this. Today we'll talk about the shapes of the bone. In the next video we'll talk about the ossifications. What are the cells in your bone? Osteocytes, osteoblasts to build up bone and osteoclasts to cut down bone. Don't forget that your osteoclasts have the same origin as the macrophages or monocytes or kupfer cells or microglia. These are cells that eat up stuff. Bone structure. We need cells, we need matrix and minerals. The matrix is mostly type 1 collagen and others. The cells, osteoblasts, osteoclasts, osteocytes. The minerals, calcium and phosphate, collectively known as hydroxyapatite crystals. Calcium is very important for the health of the bone, especially if you're growing up or if you are sick, if you have a bone disease. Bones have metabolic functions by providing calcium and phosphate homeostasis. Please pause and review. There are many differences between bones and cartilage. Please pause and review. Which type of collagen do we find in bones? Type 1, mostly. The strongest type. Now let's talk about the different types of bones based on their shape. We have long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, pneumatic bones, and sesamoid bones. First, long bones. Where do you find them? Upper limbs and lower limbs. Each long bone has a shaft, the diaphysis, which is cancellous bone. And then we have two ends, a proximal end and a distal end. The end is known as the epiphysis and it's made of compact bone. Inside the shaft, there is bone marrow in the medullary cavity. The outer shell is called cortex. The inner part is called the medulla. If I take a cross section in this bone, what do I see? I see a triangle with three borders and three surfaces. Next, short bones, such as the carpus of your hand, i.e. the wrist bones, and the tarsus of your foot. There is no shaft in the short bones. They are too short to have a shaft. Most of these short bones are made of cancellous bones, for the most part, 
and a very thin outer shell made of compact bones. Next, flat bones. All of them start with the S, such as skull bones, sternum, and scapula. Let's talk about the skull, for example. If I take a piece of your skull bone, they look like this. They have an outer layer, known as outer table, made of compact bone, very strong. Inner table, also compact bone. Between them, there is the less strong cancellous or spongy bone, known as the diploe. Coming up next, irregular bones. Look at the hip bone, very irregular. The vertebrae, very irregular in shape. Some skull bones are very weird. What do they have? Cancellous bone covered by a thin shell of compact bone. Next, my favorite, pneumatic bones. What does pneuma mean? It means air. That's why we have pneumonia, which is a disease of the lung. Oh, the lung has air, pneumo. How about if I have air between the two plural surfaces? We call this pneumothorax. Pneumo means air. Artificial pumps that use air, we call them pneumatic devices. Pneumatic bones are bones that are filled with air, such as some bones of your skull that contain cavities known as paranasal sinuses. Para means parallel. Nasal is the nose. Sinuses, cavities. These are cavities around your nose. Paranasal sinuses. Have you ever suffered from sinusitis? That's inflammation of those cavities. So what's the deal with these pneumatic bones? The intermediate cancellous layer, the diploe, is absorbed and replaced by air-filled space. What's the function of these sinuses? They reduce the skull weight, making it easier on your vertebral column. They increase voice resonance. You will notice that if you have sinusitis, if I block this with gunk instead of air, your voice will change and Nancy Ajram will not be able to sing. They also help warm the inspired air. By the way, just like any of your body cavities, these sinuses are lined by mucosa, epithelium. Sesamoid bone. I don't like the name. I prefer sesamoid structures because they do not have to be bones. They could be bones or they could be fibrocartilage. If you remember my video on fibrocartilage. Where do we find the sesamoid structures? In certain tendons when they rub against the convex bony surface. The most famous one is the patella, which is hidden in the tendon of the quadriceps muscle in your leg. But that's not the only one. We also have the fabella. What the flip? Never heard of this. Where is that? It's embedded in the tendon of the origin of the lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle behind your leg. You mean the Achilles tendon? No, I said the tendon of origin, not the tendon of insertion. Pay attention. What else? We have the pesiform bone. Where is that? Embedded in the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle. We have more sesamoid structures in the adductor pollicis muscle, the metatarsophalangeal joint of the big toe, and we have some of them sometimes present in the sole of your foot. And if the doctor is a doofus, he might confuse them for bone fracture. It's not a bone fracture, it's a sesamoid structure. They happen because you are rubbing against convex bony surfaces. This is to protect you from excessive friction or pressure. So there you have it. Long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, pneumatic bones, and sesamoid bones. Let's take it to the clinic. Inflammation of skin is dermatitis. Inflammation of the fascia is fasciitis. Inflammation of the muscle is myositis. Inflammation of the tendon is tendonitis. Inflammation of the site of the insertion of the tendon into the bone is enthesitis. Inflammation of the bone is ostitis. Inflammation of the cartilage is chondritis. Inflammation of the joint is arthritis, such as rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, psoriatic arthritis, etc. Don't forget that the costochondritis pain sometimes can mimic the pain of a heart attack. It's not similar, but many patients with costochondritis might think that they are suffering from a heart attack. How can I rule out my cordial infarction? You can order an ECG, you can order serum enzymes such as troponins. Troponins are released from muscles such as the heart, they are not released from cartilages. So, a myocardial infarction will have elevated serum troponins, but costochondritis will not. 
If you like this video, you will enjoy my renal physiology course on my website medicosisperfectionetics.com. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course and a surgery high yields course. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionetics, where medicine makes perfect sense.